Bobs aren't allowed to wear pants. <clears throat> or they're like, they're soft spoken and I wouldn't say womanish, but neutral. Neutral, you know, it might be offensive to them, but I wouldn't name anybody and um, they probably won't listen anyway. So I don't mind saying sort of gender neutral. Um, no real womanish characteristics, but no real manly characteristics either. And, th and that tends to be the accepted male um, figure these days. And I think it's kind of gross. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about how to raise my son. So if, if you all know, it's a lack. And we, we all need to be looking at it. And somebody, I don't know, somebody lead us through it. Somebody teach us how. Because um, somebody must know, right? God hasn't abandoned us. That's just something I personally haven't figured out. One of y'all must know. So share it out. So so anyway, moving on. Um, willingness. So when we get into the song, <clears throat> th that's what we see. Um, and, and you go right down the line, Deborah sings, um, you know, a song about basically what happened in, in chapter 4. She gives, you know, a... a Praise to the Lord. <clears throat> she she declares his greatness. Um, she talks here. Uh, let's see. You know, she talks about like 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 history. The the prophet that had preceded her, um, and and how he he really had done a terrible, um, or you know, a not great job. And um, and then Deborah rose, and she was able to bring, you know, some order and peace to the land, which is what, you know, God sent judges for, and, um, but, you know, the, the people had chosen new gods, there was war, um, but there were, like here in for chapter 5, verse 9, um, governors, leaders of the people that offered themselves willingly, and Deborah's heart was toward them. And, and she goes on here to, to here we go, starting in verses uh, 13 and then down to chapter 18. She, she goes through a list of the tribes that, that lived around there in that area, and she, she talks about them. What, what did they do? Um, let's see here. Benjamin, they came down. Some of the folks of Zeb Zebulun came down. All the princes of Issachar came. Now then, Reuben, he stayed among his sheep. Gilead and the folks of Dan stayed on the other side of the river. Asher kept on fishing. But Zebulun and Naphtali... They showed up and risked their lives. They were willing. And they didn't lose a man. And every last one of Sisera's men, right down to Sisera, were killed. <clears throat> God gave them that victory. The victory was assured before they ever set foot out the door. But they had to be, today's word of the day is, willing. That's right. You got it right. Gold star for you guys. Also, just just as a side note, <clears throat> verse 20, they fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Give some thought to that. What does that mean? What can a burning ball of gas do to Sisera? And is there other figurative language in this song? No. Every last bit of it is literal, except for that part. Um, or maybe not except for that part. If that's literal, what does that mean? I'm not going any further into that today. Just give it some thought. Verse 20. Um, <clears throat> so then we go on. Here's the angel of the Lord actually pronouncing curses. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm so sorry to do that to you. Um, against this city of Miraz because they didn't come out. And listen to what he says. They came not out to help to the help of the Lord. To the help of the Lord against the mighty. Now, we clearly know that God needs no help. Um, he could have, you know, just swallowed those dudes up with a gigantic hole in the ground, 
there's precedent for that. It happened to um, Korah, right? The sons of Korah. Um, it happened to... Uh, I think it happens in the prophecies, like in the end time. There's some um, interpretation of the, the ground opens up, or the ground helps the woman by opening up her mouth and swallowing the armies of the Antichrist. And that's generally, I think, understood to be like, um, you know, the ground opens up and, and swallows them up. <clears throat> but anyhow, um, so here, uh, these, God needs to know help. But God does not accept the fact that he does not need your help as an excuse for you to sit and do nothing. And you can see that from these verses. And that goes for you, and that goes for your husband, and that goes for your church. If you do nothing for anyone outside of your home, simply because God does not need you, then you need to read Judges chapter 5, verse 23, and ask the Lord, what it means for you, what it means for the church, and how you should understand that and act. I'm going to leave that alone and um, let the Holy Spirit guide you through that one. So here's the good part. Here's the important part. Here's the part that these old commentators that, you know, that like to call Yale presumptuous, um, even though, you know, Deborah makes it clear that God delivered Sisera into her hands on purpose, um, to spite Barak, even th- though that's clearly in the Bible, they they still want to say that uh, Yale stole his life from him, that she was presumptuous, that she ran ahead of you know Barak, the the Lord's actual sent person to take care of this. If you ever read or hear anything like that, <clears throat> you can just send them to Judges five twenty four to thirty one. And it just blows it out of the water. You don't even need to speak. You can just say, Judges 5, 24 to 31, and you're done. You can walk away and let them deal with the rest of it. Um, <clears throat> Blessed above, above women shall Yale the wife of Heber the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be among women in the tent. Yes, that really sounds like God is very, very upset with her um, for what she did. I agree. That's the kind of language you're always looking for. Um, when someone has done the wrong thing, and God's going to get them for it later. Um, no, I'm sorry. I, I really was going to try hard not to be sarcastic in these in these podcasts, but but listen, that's just a really dumb position. Um, I mean, I get it. Like, I would imagine that everyone who has written that or read it and agreed with it probably has a lot more in common with Barack than they would ever admit. And so um, the actions of Yale shamed them in the same way that they shamed Barack. And that's why they write those things. And I understand. I do. I get it. Um, But I don't care. Um, If you see that anywhere, it's a lie. And and a lie is from the devil. You're not meant to read this and ha- feel your heart soar with Yale, and and think and think in your heart. Um, about the, you know, the meaning of risking your life um, to put an end to a threat to your children and to Israel and to the you know the people of God. Um, I don't want you to to think about that and, and identify with Yale and, and identify with, with Deborah the prophetess and read this story and be fed with it and then all of a sudden and, and, and have some old dude come along and, and try and yank your food away by making you f- feel ashamed um, or, or that you were wrong you know, to, to feel those things or to, to read that into the story because um, <clears throat> that's just bunk that comes out of their like I say that comes out of their identity as a Barack and um you know like i say when you when you're dealing with somebody like that you know feel a lot of compassion for them because um 
God doesn't have nice things to say about a coward. And then, you know, pray for him because who cares? You know, of all of the problems that um, that people have to overcome in order to to climb over to to God, that I mean, compared to some of the stuff out there, just being a coward, that's nothing. I mean, you know, serial killers get saved, rapists get saved, all kinds of just really rotten people. You know, read the testimony of Ted Bundy. That dude was legit saved. I, I really believe that. And, you know, just a garden variety, like, coward that, I don't know, sells lumber or whatever and takes care of his family. Come on. That's that's the teeniest, tiniest little flick of God's finger, you know. That's not even small enough. So, who cares? Okay, your husband's a coward. Maybe you're a coward. Um, lazy, whatever. I don't know how many how many times I guess I'll just I'll say this every day. Big whoop. Take it to God. It's all small stuff. I, every bit of it. Like there God handles cancer. God handles wars. God handles Ted Bundy. God can help your 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 soft and pasty husband. He can. I'm just saying. Um, and if your husband's, you know, strapping and tanned and manly, amen, sister. Get him out there. Share him. Get him out there fixing little old ladies, you know, garages so he can shame their neighbors into being manly and, and raking little old ladies' leaves and stuff. Um, that's what I say. You know, let's, let's, let's pray and learn how to, how to raise our sons and let's build our husbands up. And, and don't just build them up for ourselves, but, but share them. Get them out there. Um, you know, being examples um, to other men to, to lead them, or if that's what it takes, shame them into, um, into seeking a life of strength and usefulness to those who, who, who need it, uh, which, I, which I think is a huge, a huge part of what it means to be a Christian man. And so, I'm sorry, I can't, we keep going back to that, but I guess that's just a really overwhelming, you know, characteristic of this passage that's always stuck out to me. And as a wife and, and as a mother of a son, you know, manliness is it's, it's as important to me as, as it is to them, too. So, you know, it keeps coming up. But um, we're almost out of time, and I just, I really do want to focus on Yale. And I understand that a lot of people can be put off by what she did, exactly what she did. Um, but sisters, that's what she had. Have some compassion for this girl. She lived in a tent in the desert. You know, she saw a chance to save people's lives. She knew who this man was. She knew about his 900 chariots. And just because it says there was peace between his king and her husband, that doesn't mean that she loved him or that she was a traitor or was on his side. That means her husband didn't mess with that king and that king didn't mess with her husband. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that they were friends or partners. And it doesn't mean that she tricked Sisera and and, and was a, um, a traitor or a betrayer. She knew who she was, and she risked her life to put an end to those 900 chariots, to put an end to his raids. You know, go and find out who Sisera was and what he did, and then see what Yale did for, for, for Israel, for the chosen people of God, and then go back and look. At verse 23, and see what God says to people who won't risk their lives to do his work. Um, blessed is Yale among women. And I say, I want that strength and I want that courage. I want that presence of mind to know when there's an opportunity for me to bless the church, to, to help God. Um, he said that. I'm not saying that I'm great and that I've got all sorts of things to offer. He said that. And if my understanding of that is wrong, then I know he'll he'll fix my understanding and, and put me in line to do whatever it is he actually does mean in this verse. That That's what I'm after. Whether it's our husbands or whether it's us, let's put this Barack spirit that we've got in America away and let's pray for a double portion of the spirit of Yale that we'll stay at home and feed our families, and brush our camels. And when an opportunity comes up to bless the church, to bless somebody else, to slay an enemy, even if it's bloody and ugly, that we shall not be unwilling. God bless you, sisters.